What kind of anarchist are you? Why do you do the things you do? Tell me your secrets deep inside. Is that how it goes? I honestly could not <laughs> tell you. I know That's... the second line is always weird. It's it's like, tell me your feelings or something. I, let me look <laughs> it up. Tell me your feelings. <laughs> and it's just, Pika P. What kind of Pokemon are you? Lyrics. Share with me your secrets deep inside. I was right on track. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to know all the secrets of anarchy. Share with me your theories deep inside. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's jump into it then uh, with that wonderful <laughs> musical in intro. Uh, we're going to be talking about anarchism. Cool. And uh, kind of the different types of cool. anarchism. We won't really dive too much into like a historical, uh, you know, ha origin story, anything like that too much. You restrained yourself? Yeah, because <laughs> it was just too many holes to go, rabbit yeah. holes to go poking around in uh so we're going to be kind of broadly talking okay overall what is anarchism what's not our an anarchism and then what are the different varieties and stuff cool so i feel like this is going to be kind of like our, our what type of leftist are you which i think i also did a song for uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can find out uh, by going back to listen to episode seven we did touch on some anarchy there i believe yeah yeah some of the leftist tendencies we were talking about were will revisit here cool and maybe with a better explanation i'm not sure yeah so. we've grown <laughs> uh, all right so overall what is anarchism uh, anarchism is the movement to abolish oppressive systems of authority and replace them with a classless stateless society where everyone manages their own communities together via consensus direct democracy i mean that sounds pretty good no rulers no bosses i'm into it <laughs> Overall, it's like big bad or like it's big opponent, you know, mm -hmm. coercive hierarchy. Yeah. Right. If there's hierarchy, if people are bossing other people around, they hate it. Uh, yeah, I hate that, too. <laughs> uh, they're skeptical of power. They believe that it tends to corrupt. And instead, they believe everyone should, you know, be treated equally. Cool. And no one should have power over anyone else. Cool. Okay. Anarchists are not only against the state. They are also anti-capitalist. Under capitalism, you know, workers are not actually free because uh, they're controlled by the bosses and they're controlled by the state that is run by the bosses. Yeah, yeah. So this kind of brings me to my first question, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, I had heard some rumblings about like anarcho-capitalists and I'm like, that doesn't Ooh. seem right. So I'm assuming that's covered here. Yeah, I, I did want to bring that up. Uh, that is a big exclusion we're just gonna we're, we're gonna it's it's kind of debated i guess if you ask an anarcho-capitalist they'll be like oh yeah man like <laughs> we belong in the anarchist camp but if you ask any other group of anarchists pretty much do you think what do you think about the anarcho-capitalists they're gonna be like those guys are bullshit <laughs> i mean what is capitalism but not our hierarchy like we talk about this like every fucking week yeah, like, yeah, it is a hierarchy and it enforces mm -hmm. all the other hierarchies. It is the hierarchy of hierarchies. Yeah, and that's exactly what anarchists say is like, if you're actually interested in getting rid of these power structures that oppress you, you got to take out capitalism and you can't just, uh, they look at it as more of like a, just a hyper capitalist ideology, which it essentially is, you know? Yeah. It's just wanting to get rid of government, but really just kind of like downsize it or transfer all of its authoritarian power to, to even less accountable systems like, you know, the bosses. They still want somebody to be telling other people what to do. God, I mean, because that's been going so well, let's just go full mask off. Is that what they're, that's basically what they want? I mean, because they think that they're going to be the ones, you know, up there. Nobody's an, an anarcho-capitalist is like, I can't wait to do to toil away at the, That's a for good all point. the whims of my bosses, you know? <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. They don't think they'll be the, the fucking surf on Mars or whatever. Right, yeah. So they are excluded from our discussion besides to say why they're not in it. It's because this is something kind of I learned in this research is pretty much all other anarchists say they don't belong. They, good. They, they don't actually do the right thing. Good call. So <laughs> that covers anarcho-capitalists. You know, they can also 
and there's there's different flavors. You know, they can be called libertarians or <laughs> minarchists, which is just like what? I'm not like anarch no no um, state, but I'm like minimal state. You know? Okay, it's just a libertarian, right? Yeah, yeah. Any of that variety? No, keep mm -mm. that someplace else. Not for me. It's not to say there's not variety within this. There is going to be, but yeah, yeah. Those guys too far afield. No. Love it. So true anarchism in our definition has to be anti-capitalist. Yes. Yeah. Love it. And that kind of stems from the origins of anarchism itself. Like it began as this, you know, since it's completely against authority, it's going to be, like we said, against authority in all forms, yeah. state and economics. Cool. Another thing listeners might be interested in is that we, we've really read into like Marx and Engels mm -hmm. and Marx and Engels are very clear about their preference for, you know, dialectical materialism or just like write the materialist version of history yeah, uh, yeah, of yeah. looking at things and of deciding what's going to come next based on those material conditions. Anarchism is not necessarily materialist. Oh, okay. How do they so, get to things? <laughs> some people are, you know, some people kind of, some anarchists kind of adapt materialist kind of outlooks on things. Uh, but more or less, if you think about like our utopian socialists, mm -hmm. if you think about that sort of uh, idealist way to approach things of saying, I have this idea of how the world could be better. Let's do it that way. They, they want to go straight to that. That's kind of what you're doing with any sort of anarchist uh, approach because you're you're basically prescribing what you think should be changed about the world. Okay. Whereas uh, more orthodox Marxism or Marxist Leninism or what have you is going to be like, here's what happened in history and here's, here's where we think happen. it's going. And this is what we're going to try to make happen. Huh. Uh, okay. I mean, I think that's interesting. I mean, listeners are well aware of, yeah, we've talked about how, it can be really seductive to just get into this kind of prediction model with Marx mm -hmm. and just be like, it'll happen. <laughs> we'll yeah. be saved. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate when people are like, no, we got to do something. Let's get into a few big varieties of anarchism. All right. I got my Pokedex out. Who am I looking at? Who's that? <laughs> who's that anarchist? All right. So first we're going to start when we're, we're broadly speaking, going to move kind of from least left wing to most left wing. Cool. If that makes sense. All right. This is the, the baby one. It's not evolved. I don't know if it's a baby one or not, actually. It's because it's intense in its own way. This one's okay. going to be called egoist anarchism. Mm, okay. Sometimes it's called anarcho egoism. Hmm. And I'm, I'm going to give a brief tagline for each of these when I introduce them like that. So okay. this one's tagline is do whatever you want. I don't know if I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gross over, oversimplification, but okay. that's kind of my first impression of it. And kind of as, I'm, as I read more of it, it was like, well, okay, this head does have some nuance to it, is interesting. Uh, so what it argues is that you should reject subsuming yourself, your individualism to any great cause or ideal. Like you as the individual come first. Mm. And in everyone else's world, they as, you know, their individual self comes first too. Mm, I don't know. They're going to have to sell me on this one. All right. So let's, let's make the pitch then. Uh, the argument goes that people are kind of limited only by their power to assert what they want to do, to take what they want to take. I don't like that one. <laughs> it sounds bad. It sounds really bad. A more generous way to look at it is that it's just kind of a different view of our kind of concept of rights okay as more of like liberties or freedoms to do things and it's not um they're not something to be like granted from on high or mm -hmm. guaranteed by the community in some sort of social contract they're only actually in existence when you assert them when you mm. do, do them when you carry them out okay so you have freedom of speech right yeah but not because the government says we promise not to throw you in jail if you say something bad, you have freedom of speech when you dare to speak out. Okay. I mean, to me, that doesn't matter that much. I don't know. Okay. I, I guess I don't understand the distinction between 
them having it and them using it and why that's important. Like, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Well, because on the other hand, what happens when when the state or your boss or the commune to come tells you, you've got to do this thing mm -hmm. and you disagree with it? The egoist anarchist says, give them the finger, do what you want. But what if the thing you want to do is really bad? Then you're going, you know, then I guess following that you would do something bad. Uh, the idea is, though, that you shouldn't. You shouldn't do bad things, you know. Uh, but on the other hand, people should be free. Like, people should be free and do good things. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm a fucking security nut or whatever, because mm -hmm. this is a common argument. Like, what if they want to just do murder? But like, I'm, let's take it back a notch and be okay. like, okay, what if they're just a dick? What if they're just like a huge dick in the commune and we like fucking vote them off the island? <laughs> then you vote them off the island. I mean, I saw people kind of arguing about this in some forums and stuff and on Reddit. And they were saying, yeah, what happens if, you know, one of these egoist guys like wants to have slaves, you know, and yeah, they should just do that. Cool. Right. And it's like, well, what stops that from happening? What stops that from happening is all the other egoists in the place saying, hey, that's bullshit that you have slaves and they mm. you know, kick you out or kill you or whatever. You know, I don't like, I don't like the killing part either. I, I think another thing we're getting hung up on is that they're not really saying that like. Probably most egoists aren't going to do that, I guess. Is that what they're saying? They're, they're saying that, yeah, most people aren't going to do that. Another thing they're saying is you ever get into this argument about like altruism versus like mm -hmm. self-interest. Mm -hmm. What they say kind of is that it is self-interest. You know, when you do good for other people, you're doing good because like it makes you feel good and stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so they're not saying like you're not going to do good things. They're just saying like, hey, you care about people and stuff. That's because it rewards you in some way mm -hmm. and that's fine. Like you should do what you want to do and still do good things because of that. Cause it'll make you feel good. Yeah. I'm wondering too, if this is a little philosophy shit, but because you're an egoist and you believe everyone has these like inherent rights, you probably like don't want to step on those other rights. Cause you're like, yes. no, those are super important. Mm -hmm. You, you believe in kind of the supremacy of your rights to do things, but yeah, you're the center of your own universe, but everyone else is the center <laughs> of theirs and you don't want to like step on them either. Cause that would, you know, that would suck. You don't think people should do that to you. It's kind of, you know, golden rule stuff, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Um, it's maybe it's just a matter of phrasing just cause mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm such a person who craves community that I'm just like, no, I feel like we're beholden to each other and we should try to do good for other people and blah, blah, blah. And I think maybe they get to the same place. They just do it through a different lens. I, I kind of agree with that outlook on it. Yeah. It definitely struck me the same way it struck you when I first heard it. I was like, these guys are <laughs> assholes. Yeah. They're just going to like kill people or something. And I yeah. think that we're kind of conditioned to see it that way Probably, because yeah. of our, you know, because of the world we're in is that so many people like have an incentive to be assholes to each other yeah, and are kind of held back. Now, one other thing that the egoists, and there's a very important egoist thinker. He's like the, the font of all this. Uh, okay. There's a guy named Max Stirner. Okay. And he lived back during Marx's and Engels' time. Cool. And he actually like knew them, hung out with them. They would go to the wine bar and get drunk and Cute. talk about politics. <laughs> Have you seen that Twitter meme that's like dream blunt rotation? <laughs> no. <laughs> you just do dream blunt rotation, then you post four images of like just characters from a show or whatever. It's great. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they hung out like there's no existing photo of Max Sterner. All we okay. have is a sketch uh, drawn by Engels. Mm, okay. Was he flattering? I don't know. Look it up. It's okay. uh, Max Sterner, S-T-I-R-N-E-R, -E oh, I think. I wasn't expecting the I. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this what it is? It's the guy. <laughs> it's just a cartoon. Yeah. If you scroll down, there's a like a, the full. Oh, the full bond? standing, yeah. This is actually a really great line quality. That's Engels. I love it. Engels, my man. It looks, it reminds me of, uh, the old Hark of Agrant comics. Yes. Yes. Very Kate Beaton. Love it. Uh, and Max Turner, one of the, his, he's the guy who kind of first comes up with this egoist view and he argues that people kind of hold themselves back. 
you know, hold themselves back. We agree to follow social institutions. We agree to like, you know, the state property rights, gender norms, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we kind of agree to these, even though they're not really things. He refers to them as spooks in the mind, Ooh, okay. saying that they're really just social conventions that That's true. we could just ignore if everybody didn't want to do it. We just That's fucking true. don't like, have to do it. There's so many times where I'm just like, why are we doing this? <laughs> like gender, uh, obscure parliamentarian rules in Congress. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> just a fucking handshake, guys. We could just not. Yeah. Sterner says, don't. Give them a finger. Do what you want. <laughs> All right. Another um, interesting point of this that made me go like, huh, I don't know. Let me read more about this because I've got the wrong idea, maybe, mm -hmm. is that uh, he, Sterner's views and, and egoist anarchism uh, has influenced prominent left intellectuals uh, and anarchists such as friend of the show, Emma Goldman. I like her. She's great. Yeah. Emma Goldman defended Sterner. Uh, against people who were saying this guy's just like a might makes right sort of dude, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, listeners, if you want to learn more about Emma Goldman, she is uh, featured on episode 14. You want to go listen about her. She's cool. Yeah, for real. Uh, and she said kind of like, ultimately anarchists, you know, are trying to build this world without hierarchies. So we are trying to build a world where people are like free to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Obviously we, you know, we'll still have, like you were saying, things in place to like, make sure people don't just up and kill each other or do anything like that. But we yeah. do like kind of want people to have that freedom, I guess is her argument. Interesting. Well, I think too, maybe we're leaving out the material piece here of that in these sort of communities, they will be taken care of. So you're going to have mm -hmm. less reasons to do bad things probably yeah yeah egoists can kind of be a part of other tendencies that we're going to look at okay and for a lot of people it's more of like an influence rather than their main thing okay it's like their rising sign right yeah yeah there you go <laughs> um what kind of anarchist was emma was she just straight up yeah emma uh, flavor i believe would just be an anarchist okay as we go through, we may categorize her a little differently. We'll see. Okay. I haven't spent a lot of time thinking on it. But yeah, I guess for me, the, the most positive way or the easiest way to look at them is like they emphasize people's individualism over any sort of like more communal structure. They're more focused on, can I do what I want? Interesting. I think, listen, I love me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you that I, I do consider myself a main character in a lot of ways i got the, <laughs> the anime hair to prove it there you go <laughs> but at the same time like i i feel like i'm humble enough to recognize that i'm mm -hmm. not the main character like in, in actuality yeah. and like i don't know it seems kind of crazy to me just to prioritize that over everything else i don't know i guess i have that same hang up in in terms of wanting to I think for some things you do need to have more collaboration than that's going to get you. If you have a room, mm -hmm. like a group full of egoist anarchists, it may prove very difficult <laughs> to get to any sort of consensus. Yeah. Cause like, I love me, but I'm also a dumbass in many ways. And like, I rely <laughs> on other people greatly and I can't imagine just being like, not like it's all, it's all about what I want. Cause I'm like, I don't fucking know. Well, you know, it's not excluding the possibility that what you want is to work with other people. Okay, it's yeah, just saying yeah. that, you know, you should do that because it's what you want to do, not because somebody else is making you. Okay. So that's kind of the flip side, maybe. I don't know. I still believe that actions have consequences. Like, I, I run into this issue a lot with the free speech issue. Like, people are like, you say whatever the fuck you want. I'm like, you fucking can. But that also means, like, people are free to, like, not go to your store anymore because it fucking sucks. Yeah, and I guess the egoist would say, yeah, like we were saying with the slavery thing, is like if you do something that's a complete dick move, like everyone else can be like, fuck you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and I guess their their tool in that is is that you will feel bad for being ostracized. Yeah, okay. or feel bad because the, the commie takes swift justice on you or something, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I do think that if I were, you know, running a revolutionary organization, it may be very annoying and I may end up kicking them out, mm -hmm. but it would be good 
especially once I took power or once my, our group <laughs> took power to have an egoist there to kind of put, put you in check, you know, like That's make true. sure you don't get too crazy. <laughs> we have some status tendencies, so it'd be good for people to be like, what about these people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, they're interesting. Um, I, like I said, I had the same take initially, so I was glad <laughs> to get, get some more diving into them. Yeah. All right. Who's next on the Pokedex? Next up, we have the Mutualists. Mm. It sounds like it might be the opposite. Mm. No, they're not completely okay. the opposite, <laughs> but they are uh, they're just a different focus. So mutualism, okay. it, the, the tagline for this is good and fair and non-hierarchical free market socialism. Okay. I was nodding and then I stopped nodding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So what does that mean? Because that's weird. Yeah. I don't know about this one. Mutualism supports free markets, which oh, is weird. That's weird. But they want the markets to be run by the people. Okay. So it's so it's a, it's a weird kind of anti-capitalist free market. That's very weird. So can you put that in practical terms, I guess? Like we're in our commune. I can sell shit. But if I like do some bad shit if i'm exploiting my workers the commune can shut me down kind of think about this as like the baby the nice version of not capitalism necessarily but free <laughs> markets maybe that you're initially taught is like everybody's mm -hmm. free to own their own business and to mm -hmm. you know sell things to people but but you're going to leave out profit there's no that's there's not no thing, profit all right okay so the key for them is that capitalism the way it is in the real world rips people off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what these guys want. They want the price of things to equal the price that it takes to produce them in terms of labor. Well, why even bother selling it, bro? Just give it. You remember uh, Josiah Warren, the time store guy. Doesn't he have crazy facial hair? I believe so. I think he okay. had like some sideburn situation <laughs> going on. But I do remember the time store guy. It's great. This is his shit. This is what he was all about. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, let's talk about that extra step that you're saying. Why can't you just give it to people? <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause what they want is workplace democracy. You know, workers are going to decide what they're going to do for themselves. So they uh, kind of, you know, operate their own businesses, basically mm -hmm. mutualists want people's banks. So kind of like community run banks, Okay. Democrat, they're kind of like democratically run kind of credit union style. Okay. Money is lent with an interest rate that's like just enough to cover paying the guy to do the banking for you. Okay. Just operations. You okay. Know? Non profit banks. I, I guess. still don't get the point of this for sure. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It just seems like a lot of meetings for no reason. Like, ah, guys, I got to go to my bank meeting and then I got to meet with my workers at the whatever. And then I got to meet with the whole commune. <laughs> You're you just like on meetings? Zoom all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It does have a lot of that. Let's see. Land ownership and private property ownership. For them, that still uh, exists. Okay. But it's about like use. So in capitalism, they say it, this it's all messed up because capitalists can like own land and prevent other people from using it. Oh, I like that. Okay. Well, I don't like that, but I think I like where this is going. <laughs> right. Or they can for <laughs> or they can force other people to work it without mm -hmm. doing anything themselves. What what the mutualists say is that land ownership and, and private property or whatever, that's fine if it's yours and you're using it yourself. But if you're just like, No, you can't have my stuff, like that's no. I like that. that. I like that principle a lot because I know we kinda you know, introverts we are. We struggle a little bit with the whole communal housing thing. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a nice solution, I think. Um, you can't like pass that down to your kiddos, right? Uh, I probably communes have different rules on that. Yeah, I that don't. I doubt that they would be like, "Oh, that's fine." Um, maybe who knows? Uh, yeah. Mutualists feel free to chime in, but that's <laughs> generally what they're talking about. My my I guess perspective on these guys is kind of um, let's just run the economy nicer. It just seems, like I keep saying, it just seems kind of pointless. It feels like you just dumped out a bunch of fake tokens. And you're like, well, now let's pass these around back and forth. And I guess I just don't understand the point. Like, no one's making any profit. So it's just like, why, why are we doing this? Why don't we just make the things because people need the things? Um, I guess it's I guess it's to ensure fairness of like, yeah, like I did this thing for you. So now you have to give me this 
this fake money so I can go get something else done. It's not fake money, but whatever. They're using, I think, pretty much just money, you know. Yeah. Uh, just keeping the old money system. It's just making it to where, I mean, it just comes across as making it to where it doesn't rip people off. It's just kind of yeah. reformed. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it comes across very soft to me, like very, like, why would I fight a revolution <laughs> for this? But It just seems like a lot of work for not a lot of, like, return, I guess, like. That seems like a lot to manage. You don't have to go to all these meetings. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> Good. You know. I won't. <laughs> all right. So that's mutualism. Confusing. Next, we have collectivist anarchism. Cool. I mean, this one sounds good, but I don't know. Is you it? You can also call them anarchist collectivists or anarcho collectivists. Okay. Whatever. It means the same thing. The tagline for these guys is from each according to their ability to each according to their contribution. Mm, okay, so the second line kind of snuck up on me. All right, explain yourself. <laughs> uh, so with these guys, they want to abolish the state. Cool. Abolish private ownership of the means of production, you know, capitalism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people would collectively own things. That means, you know, there's no private property like stuff that you use to do business stuff with. Yeah, but there yeah. is still personal property you mm -hmm. still have your house cool i love my house your toothbrush you good know, toothbrush these Great. things like that cool uh, and workplaces would be self-managed by the workers this all sounds good they also want to abolish money cool they want to however replace it uh -oh. with labor vouchers okay this is almost like the time store guy yeah this is similar to the time store guy but and so here's how labor vouchers or labor notes work. They're kind of an easy way to think of it is they're kind of like company script. Mm hmm. All right. But they're, they're commune script. Yeah. So like, can I guess? Sure. So I work eight hours and then I take my eight hour chips and I go to the store and I'm like, I need this. That'll cost 25 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shit, I don't actually work that long, usually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get a second job. Yeah, you'll be broke in this society. <laughs> I um, take too many naps for this society to work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you um, you take them down to the, yeah, to the commune store, just like that. They're non-transferable between people. You can't make like a 30-minute mm. bet with somebody. <laughs> All right. Uh, what would that even mean? I guess it's, okay, this is stupid. It's not like if I if I could make that bet, it's not like I'd be like, well, now you have to come mow my yard for 30 right. minutes. It's yeah. like you give me a piece of paper that says 30 minutes and then I can go turn that in for something else. Yes. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. That's the thing. That's why it can't be really transferred between people. It, it's, it's not supposed to be because mm -hmm. um, it's supposed people to totally would. just be like a fruit. It's, it's a token, you know, that you mm -hmm. use to get what you need. And it's to prove that you basically, you know, that you did the you requisite did the amount of work for it. Uh, it is disintegrated or it, or it's just like it, it's, it's put in a stack of, you know, labor vouchers to, to reissue to people whenever they do work. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's unable to be accumulated, I guess, into capital. Uh, and people who work get more than people who don't. Presumably the commune would like make sure that people who couldn't or mm -hmm. maybe even don't want to work are still provided for it at, at, at some sort of agreed upon level. Okay. But uh, other than that, it's meant to incentivize people to work. Mm. I don't like this one, I've decided. Yeah? Yeah, I have a lot of issues with, I mean, we got to hope these communes do provide for people who can't work, like, first of all. They better mm -hmm. do that, or I'm definitely out. And then... There's also, I mean, maybe I'm an edge case. This is going to sound like I'm bragging. I work very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the reason I work very quickly is because I've been drawing for like over 10 years. I know what I'm doing. You know, I, you want me to draw a cat? Done. You know? Yeah. So that, you know, 10 minutes I spent on that drawing re doesn't accurately reflect how much labor that was because that you have to account for all those like 10 years of knowledge and training and school and mm -hmm. supplies and so to me that just i don't think it works well for people who work fast i don't think it works i mean artists in particular like our time process is very weird like 
taking breaks is part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like writers, how the fuck? Like every time you get you go on Twitter, like that oh <laughs> counts it's just against a word you. count, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean it just that's what worries me. I guess creative fields is like we don't have a linear time process. That makes sense, yeah. I think I think I just have to be like, trust me, I did it. <laughs> yeah, you would you you know, you'd have a hell of a time trying to figure out how to make this work with different professions overall, you know. Yeah. So I'm assuming too, because we're we're in post capitalism, everyone would be working less. So it's not like, like why didn't you spend eight hours on your comics today? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it would be That's less. True. Yeah. I just mm, for me, I guess it's needlessly complicated. Mm-hmm. Another sort of like one. neutralism. It's just like, why, you know, why are we <laughs> going to go through all this trouble to get this? Yeah, uh, it seems like a pain in the ass. It's just like time cards, man. Do you like doing time cards? No, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but it does get you to basically the socialist stage of, you know, from each according to their need to each according to their contribution. It's people are compensated fairly. Mm -hmm. For what they've done, the boss is no longer ripping you off of your labor. I so guess it does so. do that. But. I think it still just reduces people to their labor, which I have always had a problem with. So, Do you want to elaborate? Well, I mean, we've talked about it before. It's just I, I feel like people have inherent worth besides whatever they can produce, you know, materially. So I just, I would rather, and I understand we talked about like, yeah, they could make accommodations for people who can't work or even don't want to, but I, I still feel like that is still reducing them to what can you do for, I guess for, I guess for other people in the commune, but I don't know. Something about it feels a little automaton -y. Like I gotta go, I gotta go work this much to get this much food. And like, I don't know. Yeah. That's not what I'm about. Too many similarities in some ways to, yeah. to capitalism, right? Yeah, you I think already so. have to eke out survival that way. Yeah. We're already, you know, Working from home for me has been fantastic because I do not do well when I'm just placed in a fucking cube for eight hours and they're like, you're here, so you have to work the whole time. I'm like, no one can do that. <laughs> like, who has that much attention span? And yeah, yeah, most people don't. Most people dick around for most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've mentioned the book Bullshit Jobs on here before, and it's very mm. much that thing. Hopefully, we probably have less bullshit jobs because, again, we're post-capitalism. But still, I really think that Putting people on the clock like that, one, you know, it doesn't produce like great results or anything. And two, yeah. it's, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks yeah. for the person. Definitely doesn't, for me, inspire. Uh, <laughs> it's not something that could inspire like a mass movement of people to fight for that. <laughs> Come so. on, guys. <laughs> let's all do our time cards together. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one then. The next one's better. I think we both agree. Who is it? It is anarcho-communism. I love that one. All right. This one's tagline is welcome to the commune. Hell yeah. It's at, it's just like the one before it. I do want to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, it's yeah. just like the one before it. Abolish the state. Abolish capitalism. Abolish money. Abolish social hierarchies. Do all those things. People collectively own private property. There's still personal property. And the commune decides things via direct democracy and workers or people's councils. Sounds great. Yeah. And on top of that, no wages, no labor vouchers, nothing like that. That sounds great. We just take care of people. We make our own shit. We trade with other communes for the shit we can't get. We give people the shit. Yeah. So this one moves on past the contribution stage and goes to from each according to their ability to each according to their needs. I love this one. Whatever you need, you get. Presumably, you're not going to say, I need all of the materials. I don't think the commune <laughs> would give that to you. Um, you either work for the commune or, you know, you don't. Either way, you exist as a human. Mm -hmm. Your needs are met. There is probably significantly more work going into, like, getting society to that point. Yeah. Technologically. But it does sound cool. I mean, I'm wondering if some of these earlier ones, like the mutualists and... What was the one we were just talking about? Uh, Anarcho-collectivism. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering if those could be used kind of as stop gaps of like, okay, guys, we're trying something new here. Here's what happens. And then once we've developed enough technology and once people get used to the system and they uh -huh. see like, okay, I don't have to work as much as I thought I did. Okay. Like this seems fair. 
okay, let's try to provide for everybody. Maybe you can transition, you know? Yes. Yeah. So that's the weird thing about doing this sort of taxonomy of all these different mm -hmm. systems is that for each of them, really, uh, some people within this particular tendency will say, this is it. This is what we want to mm -hmm. accomplish. And some of them, like you said, are seeing as this kind of a transition stage to another one of the groups or, you know, yeah. One of the main endpoints of them all is anarcho-communism. So, yeah, it's like when you meet a new person, you're like, um, I'm totally a social I'm democrat or whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, once they know you, once you get drunk together for the first time, that's when you let them know. <laughs> you start quoting Lenin a little bit here and there. <laughs> Test the waters. Yeah, see how there's Bond. <laughs> uh, and then your, your cop-out is just like, I don't know, I... I saw that on a, some shit post on Twitter. I, <laughs> I don't know, no just idea. on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that maybe it's it's more of an endpoint to these other different tendencies sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you can use collective anarchism to get to anarcho communism. Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, I think those both do a good job of of kind of the reactionary talking points, like what if nobody wants to work and like you know, all that kind of shit. Oh, yeah, so yeah. maybe mm -hmm. that's enough to prove people like, no, this can work guys. You know, like we'll do this for a while and then we'll phase it out. Like yeah. that might be good. You can kind of, you know, fix society a little bit more before getting to the next stage. Like you've done that boot analogy where like the boot is still wet. If you take it out of the mm -hmm. lake and the lake is capitalism. So this might be a good kind of transition. A good, yeah. Drying off period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here are some other, I want to get into some other tendencies okay. within anarchism. And these kind of focus on strategies. How to get there? Yeah. How to get there. They they kind of, they can target different ones. And maybe they want to get to mutualism. Maybe they want to get to anarcho-communism, whatever. Uh, they're not in any particular order. Cool. First up, anarcho-syndicalism. Heard of that one. I don't remember it. Vouchers, maybe? No. Labor unions. That's Labor unions is it. There yeah. We go. Basically get to anarcho-communism via the general strike. I like that one. Their main, uh, their main vehicle, their main revolutionary tool is direct action by industrial labor unions. Cool. So yeah, unionize everybody, go out on strike, shut it all down, take power for the people. I mean, that sounds good. I mean, we're not anywhere close to that because yeah, labor's or uh, yeah. labor unions aren't doing so hot, but you know, maybe one day, maybe one day. Yeah. And, uh, for these guys, once they have made the commune happen, you know, uh, mm -hmm. people kind of still use the labor union kind of format, you know, wherever you work, uh, these labor unions kind of federalize, they all like, you know, mm -hmm. form kind of a, kind of a big union or a group of unions and you kind of do direct democracy through those. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense. In some ways, maybe it's more old fashioned because like you said, the labor unions, not that they're really suffering these days. Yeah. And it's also interesting to, to think about how a lot of the times our jobs are not things we necessarily think of as our main identity. Yeah, I I think the industrial part of it is where it kind of fails for me, just because like we don't have as many of those jobs before so, as we used to. Interesting point of clarification there. Mm -hmm. uh, when when we mean industrial unions like that, they don't actually mean like factories. Okay. Okay. So what they mean there is like an industrial union would be you're unionizing everybody in a particular industry. Industry. Good. Versus okay. like a craft industry, a craft union where it would be like, okay, you're going to organize the copy editors in one thing <laughs> and then like the graphic design artists in another. And yeah. 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 You. Okay. Interesting. So what would mine be? Just marketing. So you might, yeah, you could be in. <laughs> or an art one. Yeah, you could be in an artist's union. Okay, you could that's be cool. In, a, in like a graphic design union. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how it works. Essentially, actually, how you just is have all too many jobs books, is so. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do too and many that's, things. That's another thing. It's like people have a lot of jobs, or they have a lot of like 
by their own estimation, shitty jobs. Like mm-hmm. if you're working, you know, just something to, to get by, you're working yeah. in a grocery store, working in fast food or something. I don't know if a lot of people want their main political engagement to be through those jobs. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, that's the thing. It does kind of get into that issue of like, yeah, not everyone wants to do the, the shitty jobs. Mm-hmm. So what do you do about that? And obviously the union would help to make those jobs not shitty anymore. Yeah. So that's big. Or not existent so that they can go work in something they want to work in. Yeah. Yeah. If, if they develop the technology for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think what's interesting about these is that it is like super, super materialist, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the idea they basically just skip the state entirely you know Mm -hmm. because like in traditional marxism you go from like the state running things to the state falling away and this one is like so because the state never had that middle time of being run by the bourgeoisie then like it goes straight to the unions which is worker-led which means the state has already fallen away is that right Mm, good question so (laughs) uh the state will Anarcho syndicalism wants the state to fall away immediately, not like wither mm-hmm. away later. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So the state will will die, be defeated in a revolution in in the general strike. Mm-hmm. Uh, the state will be out gone okay. at that point. I mean, I think that's good. I think it gets rid of a lot of the concerns about then, like oh, it's just super state controlled and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So. That's kind of cool. It's still very decentralized because it's kind of like just basically controlled by workers. And, and, and so like another critique, I guess, that people level at anarcho syndicalism is, well, you know, what about like the wider community of people who aren't like in those jobs or anything? They're just living there, like mm-hmm. who governs them. And especially in our modern world, so many people commute that it's yeah, yeah geographically too. But I mean, in an anarchist society, you're going to just overall have less, I guess, administration to be doing. So mm-hmm. it's not that bad. But but if you have less administration to be doing, like, how are you going to take care of people? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what, are they, what are they going to do for, like, food and shit? <laughs> so I don't know. I got some, uh, yeah, I've got some concerns about this one. It just, there's a little bit of lack of organization. Like, I think... I guess the union of unions would be the ones to decide, okay, how do we make sure we're producing enough yeah. for, for this? I think it still gets done. I mean, because you also got to think about like, this is just a tactic. Like these guys mm-hmm. want anarcho-communism the same way. So it's not like they're just going to be like, great, the labor unions are in charge. Hope they figure it out. You know, mm-hmm. they are going to be trying to administer, like you said, the whole commune overall. So, yeah, well, I keep picturing this from a nationwide perspective of so you have the big union of unions. Do you think then they're like, okay, let's kind of split up our unions into like regional chapters and yeah, to make sure. sure that everyone has enough resources? I don't think even that. I think actually the union of unions is built from the ground up from those regional chapters that already mm-hmm. exist. Okay, okay. So you already have like regional groups of unions and then they send delegates to mm-hmm. the all union Congress or whatever. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that, like, yeah, no one gets left out just because they don't live in, like, the, I don't know, the potato district where they get all the potatoes they want. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's, there would definitely be a lot of cooperation and stuff, I think. Cool. Cool. So that's one tactic. Do it through labor unions. Another tactic favored by the insurrectionary anarchists Cool. is fuck politics, attack the system, overthrow it with violence. Okay. <laughs> that's one option i guess uh these guys can fo- can you know follow any of the things mutualist collectivist communist mm-hmm. whatever uh they want to do insurrection all right. all right they think the best way to do revolution is not through formal organizations or unions or congresses or parties anything like that that's getting nowhere spinning your tires what you need to do to do revolution is to revolt is to attack the system literally now do they i assume want a mass movement uh it can be a mass movement overall and it should be it should be built yeah. up from that but you can also start with smaller cells of people i was gonna who, ask we do a vanguard kinda, situation yeah they kind of you kind of well it's not a vanguard party necessarily but just like you know 
whatever anarchist group you have, start doing these things and inspire people to join into the wider revolt. Interesting. So yeah, Oof. you know, uh, take to the streets, <laughs> fuck stuff up, make change happen directly uh, by throwing, you know, bombs at, at, at the system. Tear it down. Damn. I mean, ambitious one for sure. Um, I worry about this one because we got a big old military industrial complex that could squash most people very easily. So you're going to need a lot of guys in there. Going to need a lot of people. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a tactic you could try. It's yeah, dangerous. <laughs> however, and, that sounds um, like we're endorsing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, I just mean that in the could and not the should yeah. sense. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's violent. Uh, yeah, that one's gonna be tough. I'm not so worried. I mean, I'm worried about the violence, sure, but I'm I'm more worried about it succeeding because, like, yeah, it, you're worried about the blocks. the blowback too, the mm. reprisals, right? from the state we fucking saw that with, with the coup the fake coup or whatever it was mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever the fuck that was in january was that they did you know react to it by being more stringent and cracking down on things that will definitely affect leftists so oh, yes. yeah a hundred percent people forget that when they started the house on american activities committee huac uh, mm -hmm. and started those investigations they were initially targeting like fascist organizations <laughs> under su suspicion of uh collaborating you know with nazi germany uh the tables turned quickly on that yeah, one. yeah that one didn't work out did it so anytime they say don't worry we're going after the bad guys with it yeah <laughs> yeah i kind of this is almost a substripe of insurrectionary anarchism because it's very similar okay uh, it's called illegalism cool Illegalism's tagline is do crimes, rebel against the system. Be gay, do crimes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they are into like, you know, they like rebelling against the state, but they like to do so via crime, just crime in general, just, just crime, do crimes. It's an act of rebellion <laughs> against the state. Okay. The state says, don't do these things. You do the things you're given the, the finger to the state. Well, I'm okay with this as long as the crimes can kind of help some people, maybe. A little Robin Hood situation. I don't want people just to go out and, like, do a murder so, for no reason. Yeah, so here's how it's been carried out. Um, you know, like you mentioned, stealing, right? Mm -hmm. Stealing's fine. <laughs> Call it individual reappropriation. Um, That's but, fine. Yeah, just steal from the rich, give to yourself or to the poor if you want. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, you, some of them did this with propaganda of the deed. Remember we talked about this with mm -hmm. Emma Goldman and her anarchist friends was, uh, mm -hmm. do some assassinations, you know, yeah, just kill people or Shit. bomb people. Shit. It's not restricted to that. It doesn't really have to be like out in the open or like, uh, clearly connected to being against the state. Like you could just do some other crimes it's fine like Just whatever you do fraud. <laughs> yeah whatever you do there from in their eyes kind of like delegitimizes the state it's like saying you know what i'm not following the rules i'm doing my own thing this one sounds too hands off maybe or too random it, i mean it's not like obviously it's not organized yeah it's just like do whatever you want that's one so. of the criticisms that it that i found about it too it's like, I don't see how you make that transition. Is it just that you do so many crimes that you inspire everyone else to do so many crimes and like police are just overwhelmed and they give up? And yeah, partially, partially it's just like, since so many people kind of, you know, theoretically join in uh, or, or sort of are won over to the point of like, yeah, you're right. What's the fucking point of following these laws? These guys are assholes, mm -hmm. right? They start to see, and it's kind of like what Sterner was saying about the spooks. They start to start to see the government as like, Ah, they don't really have that much power. Like, why do we need them? Mm, okay, okay. I don't know, guys. They have a lot of fucking power, so this one yeah. works me too. They did have a cool example. Um, they had several cool examples of both of these, because, like, insurrectionary anarchism. Uh, remember when we were talking about Lenin in Lenin's bio episode? Mm-hmm. And that is episode 34, if you want to go back and listen to that. His brother was kind of a part of one of these insurrectionary kind of anarchist oh, groups okay. in Russia, the Narodnia Volia, 
the People's Will group. Then they were, you know, they were the ones who assassinated the czar. He didn't do, he mm, tried yeah. to do to that to a later czar, but, um, <laughs> but that's an example of it. He also had an example of, um, illegalism. There was this, uh, gang in France <laughs> okay. called the Bono gang. So what's their deal? It was in 1911, 1912, and they went around robbing banks. <laughs> cool. Uh, they went around robbing banks, stealing fancy cars. Every, basically, every car was fancy back then. So a lot of <laughs> the times true. when they were running from a the car. cops, the cops were chasing them on horseback and oh, that's great. <laughs> bicycles and stuff. And they're just driving away. They had a lot of times better weapons than the cops. And they were, you know, killing people and taking their shit. Okay. And, they, you know, they eventually get arrested. But it's just one of these examples of, I guess, do crimes break down the system okay. that's the tactic we've been watching this netflix show about pirates and it kind of reminds me of that <laughs> a little bit of pirate action yeah but i guess i share your critique that it's not a lot of times when regular people look at this they're not like damn anarchy you know they're just like damn crimes <laughs> yeah someone should get control of these guys is what they think you know yeah i just yeah i don't see how you translate that to like a mass movement into like actual lasting change yeah and it's also what we were talking about before. Mm, you run the risk of more crackdowns from the government. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you may be thinking that this all sounds a little violent and dangerous for your tastes. Uh, okay. Who's next? In that case, you should try anarcho pacifism. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, when you were earlier, is this the opposite? This is the opposite. This one's probably the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These guys uh, completely reject the use of violence. They rationalize cool. it as their explanation is that they see violence as a form of power. Yeah, I think it is. So anarchists should reject power. So anarchists should reject violence. Okay. They say the state, it's just organized violence. So like. Absolutely it is. So let's not do that. Okay. Anarcho-pacifism, they also are very focused on a question that we've talked about a lot. The question of means and ends mm, yeah and so for them they see the means that you use to get to anarcho-communism right mm -hmm. they see those means as kind of as they put it ends in the making okay so the means th that you use to get there will kind of determine where you end up i think that makes sense yeah i think it's interesting we've mentioned that before when we talk about like the Bolsheviks playing it mm -hmm. very close to their chest, real secretive Vanguard party. When they get into power, the state kind of has this gulf between it and the people. I think that makes sense. Cause if, yeah, if you're willing to use, let's just say if you're willing to use violence in the beginning, who's to say you're not willing to use it later. Yeah. Yeah. That's their critique. Yeah. So that's anarcho pacifism basically. I mean, again, with these guys and with the previous ones, you can fit them into any of the other groups. Okay. It's just like a means sort of thing. I like that one, but I do worry about like how the fuck they're going to get anything done, but it's you, cool. You don't think the capitalists are just going to be like, <laughs> well, you're right. We're violent. I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were being so bad. Here I'll stop now. Yeah, probably not. That's a rough one. That's the big downside is uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sort of like the, with the egoist, I would like to have an anarcho-pacifist counselor mm -hmm. to come to talk to and be like you know how can i rein this in how can we make sure we don't get too crazy with it yeah but i feel like to be effective they would always be criticizing me because i would always be doing some, some sort of <laughs> actual uh meaningful revolutionary action probably yeah. involving violence you know i think yeah that's the thing if if the state is Organized violence. How are you going to take that down? You can't just be like, please move. Like, yeah. On the other hand, I mean, if you think about it, there's a, there is a difference between like, you know, the insurrectionary attack them violence and the, like, if you were saying the anarcho syndicate, if you're saying like, go on strike, mm -hmm. there's a difference between the violence involved in like defending yourself from Pinkerton thugs or something. That's true. That's true. So like that can in a way be nonviolent. Yeah. Uh, next we've got platformism. Okay. What's that? Got cool platform shoes. 
Uh, no, no plat. I mean, it's not like against. They're those, not anti. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, so platformism is when you're worrying like, okay, there's 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 all these different ways we could do this, um, mm -hmm. but how are we even going to get any anything done if we're so like horizontal? If we're so like, there's no hierarchy, no power structure. Uh, how are we going to like cooperate enough to get stuff done? That's where you need platformism. Interesting. Their tagline is do anarchy with more internal organization. Uh, so they stress the need for anarchist organizations to be more organized, to be able to influence revolutionary movements. Okay. Their four main principles are ideological unity, tactical unity, collective responsibility, and federalism. Interesting. Basically, what they mean is not just anybody. We shouldn't just be letting anybody into our anarchist organizations, even if they believe something that's bullshit. They need to believe the right stuff. Oh, I don't like this one that much. Okay. I, don't, I, I like being bigger tent, and then we can argue later when, like, capitalism's gone. That's fine. We can fucking, we can, like we said, we can argue whenever we're in power and we're, like, living it up in the commune, and we can get drunk and argue about shit. Awesome. Yeah. That's that's a fair point. These guys uh, say no. You gotta you gotta believe the right thing. Agree that we're gonna work together as, as a group and not just fly off the handle and rob a bank or mm -hmm. do your own egoist thing. You gotta you know we're not centralized. We're still like you know diverse, but believe the right thing, please, and get this done. They their origins are interesting because they actually come from some anarchists that fled Soviet Russia after losing the Russian Civil War. Okay. And they kind of like learned lessons in getting beaten. Uh, yeah. That they were like, okay, well, you know, those Bolsheviks, uh, they did take power. They were onto something. We got to have some more organization. Mm. You know, we got to have mm. some party discipline. Interesting. Yeah. I just don't care about party discipline that much. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm one big picture, you know, one big goal. Big tent, right? Yeah. All right. I think so, so you want synthesis anarchism or Ooh. anarchism without adjectives either way it's fine okay their tagline is can't we all just get along i like this one too <laughs> <laughs> so these guys say uh it's the opposite of platform is great big tent we should tolerate different anarchist schools we're all anti-authoritarians mm -hmm. here uh we might have different methods of getting there or you know different views of what there exactly looks like but like you said we can hammer that out later once we have taken power we've smashed the state smashed capitalism people are in charge now we can debate the finer points i like that one yeah <laughs> that one sounds good to me i mean i'm sure the critique of it is like how do you decide to get anything done but like i don't tell me there's so many fucking things we could address you know like the there's there's a the big fucking elephant in the room of capitalism. Like, let's take care of that, guys. Like, we don't have to do everything at once. Yeah, yeah. And it's similar to what we said with, you know, Mao and the Communist Party working with the Kuomintang is like, mm -hmm. th th those guys, they didn't like each other, but they did it to get it to fight off the Japanese, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you've got these different factions having to work together to take power in the first place. Yeah. I mean... It's not a bad idea. Yeah, it raises a good point. So uh, I think it's a good it's a good tendency, I guess, to have. Even if you're like an anarcho-communist, you can still be like, sure, I'll work with any other anarchist, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. I hope I would. <laughs> and cross ideologies here. If you're an anarcho-communist, I don't know, you might have some qualms, I guess, about working with like, Marxist Leninists or someone who mm -hmm. would want to like defeat the bourgeois state, but then want to, you know, kick in a different <laughs> sort of state um, and vice versa. Like if you're a Marxist Leninist, you, you might work with the anarchists at first, but then you may end up with a different fight on your hands after. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely see that as a lot of, I don't know. I, I've, I've seen a lot of those kind of infighting tendencies and it's just like, Eh, whatever, guys. Like, get over yourselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's definitely a, a good point. Like we've said before, wouldn't it be nice to have these arguments uh, <laughs> mean something because we're actually, like, in power changing things? Yeah, man. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, what else do we have? So we have some other tendencies here. There's kind of a catch-all term called post-left anarchy. Okay, what's that? And so these guys kind of say, look... 
all these forms of anarchy, like you guys are all kind of stuck in the past, you know, you're, <laughs> you're too, um, too obsessed with the old left, right dichotomy. And you just okay. gotta like, it's, it's more, mm, there's different ways that they approach it really, but it's, it's, it's more like, let's not be as beholden to like being anti-capitalist. That's not the only thing that's bad. Like we got to just be against power altogether. And it's, it's kind of vague. There's a lot of different mm -hmm. parts okay. of it, but to me, it doesn't hold mm, enough coherency to really yeah, be its own thing. Yeah. I don't like this one that much. I mean, like, it's, I just feel like capitalism is, is the ultimate expression of, of power structures. You know, it is, I feel like almost every power structure can be linked back to it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, to, in their, maybe in their defense or to portray them more positively, in some ways they try to, we're saying that the old fashioned thing, they try to, you know, I guess, encourage or kind of critique anarchists and say you gotta update like you can't just be all out there talking about the proletarians no one knows what you're talking about okay focus more on less on traditional leftism and more on more on like just broadly social insurrection just like people i guess that's how they would characterize it more you think it's a little more identity politics in there i wouldn't say that no, okay. not necessarily, but maybe it's more, it's more along the lines of like, more like Sterner in terms of like, just, re, you know, just rebel or just be like against the, okay, it's more broad. The power structure. Yeah, it's, it's more of okay. a, don't get tied down by ideology, basically, which okay. I think is kind of wishy-washy. Yeah, that's fine. It's, <laughs> it's not my fave. So some other groups, these are tendencies that kind of focus on groups or issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one is black anarchism. Cool. Uh, these next ones are going to be kind of like a synthesis of anarchism plus another issue. So yeah, black yeah. liberation in this case. Sounds great. And this can, this is not just focused on, on black people in America. It's more focused on, on marginalized groups. In, in general, in terms of ethnicity, so you know, black and brown people. Okay, uh, cool. And more broadly speaking, just anti-white supremacy. Great, good thing to be anti. Yeah, everyone should <laughs> should incorporate that part into their whatever anarch other anarchism uh, stripe you Absolutely, are. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Uh, same with anarcho-feminism. Cool. Yeah. Feminism, right? Yeah, um, do and that. This, <laughs> has yeah this has like an a really old tradition in within anarchism cool going all the way back to uh mikhail bakunin he's not the like founder of anarchism or anything he's just a really early guy in it okay he argued against the patriarchy he said equal rights must belong to men and women women should become independent and be free to forge their own way of life fuck yeah so it's like you know really early on you've got this uh you've got in the Spanish Civil War, there was an anarcha feminist group called Mujeres Libres, nice. the free women, uh, who were, you know, out there spreading their stuff in within the within anarchist Spain. Cool. Emma Goldman, of course, we've mentioned her as yes. well. Yes. And it's just kind of trying to tie up that fight against the patriarchy, against like the necessity of the traditional family mm -hmm. uh, of these, you know, and, and of religious concepts of what, you know, families have to be or what morality has to be that sort of thing. And in favor yeah. instead of people's freedom to be how they want to be and to have equal rights. Sounds great. Yeah. I think we should definitely incorporate both of those, both black anarchism and, and anarcho feminism into Whatever it is we're doing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as well as queer anarchism. Hell yeah. Also called anarcho-queer. Uh, the uh, synthesis of anarchism and queer liberation. Great Twitter handle if that's not already taken. <laughs> anarcho -queer. That is 100% already taken, right? <laughs> uh, so queer anarchism also has a long history. I mean, you've got... Uh, and we... Mentioned this, I guess, a little bit when you were talking about kind of the history of the queer community and, and, and communism. Yeah, that is episode 27. But it's, it's, it's got a long 
current of people talking about homosexuality saying like that's not messed up let people do that <laughs> let, let people do what they want yeah uh and that's i mean that was the argument they were having back then was was trying to convince people like just let people have rights guys um <laughs> Emma Goldman was also involved in that also uh, yeah. out there telling people gay men and lesbians should have the right to love as they pleased. She condemned the fear and stigma associated with homosexuality. It's a tragedy. I feel that people of a different sexual type are caught in a world which shows so little understanding for homosexuals and is so crassly indifferent to the various gradations and various variations of gender and their great significance in life. Mm. Man, she might be my fave. She's I don't think she got any cool. strikes in her episode. I mean, we can always try to find, <laughs> go dig up some oppo <laughs> research on her. See what she, I'm, I'm sure she messed up somewhere. Everybody yeah. does, but. Yeah. She's good though. Yeah. There's also, there's, there's just so many figures that I really can't get into everyone, but. That's it's, fine. It was surprising to me just how like consistent this was in Hell the yeah. face of, in the face of people, even within the movement. Like saying, mm -hmm. you know, fuck you guys. You're not like there was a, a Spanish anarchist journal in 1935 arguing that uh, anarchists should not even associate what with homosexuals, fuck, let alone be one. That's insane. Uh, and yeah, you know, people were typical of their time, you know, homophobic <laughs> and all this. Yeah, stuff, yeah. So. Well, I mean, yeah, we talked about it in that episode. It, it is. I really believe that. Most queerness is, is inherently radical in, in many ways. Um, yeah. Again, I would say the closer you are to being towards the power structure that is like probably white and male, I think you probably have less um, tendency towards radicalism because like you're benefiting pretty mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I, I would say, yeah, it's it's a pretty radical thing. It is, yeah. One radical chant that stood out for me, I was reading about their like protest movements and things in the queer anarchist movement, uh, a chant, uh, 2468, smash the church, smash the state. Oh, I love that. I'm going to get a bumper sticker of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so overall, that's queer anarchism. Now, if you don't like that last chant, then this next stripe may be for you. Oh, is it a religious one? Religious anarchism. Interesting. Yeah. Anarchism as preached by various uh, religious traditions. I mean, you've got Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, all these uh, kind of different varieties that aren't, I mean, you know, you could say it's an anarcho communist or whatever. It's not limited to a particular mm -hmm, thing, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of reaching people through these uh, different mediums. That one's interesting. I feel like God is a pretty uh, hierarchical thing, but maybe that's just the Catholic. Uh, background here <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you're talking um you know orthodox catholicism yeah that would be hierarchical in a sense right the i mean and again the old kind of anarchist slogan of no gods no masters doesn't necessarily conflate with this they kind of messed up on the first part <laughs> yeah we watched this great documentary on hulu about like the church of satan and it was really interesting Whoa. <laughs> i feel like they could do a good job of being part of the anarcho religious movement because their religion is like very much about taking down power structures so yeah yeah i've, I've read that too I and mean, you're always first introduced to satanism as like <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> like yeah blood sacrifice people or something no, they're just like basically a civil liberties group. <laughs> yeah, it's they're real square in comparison to what your first like. I don't know. I feel yeah. like a lot of people are first introduced as like the scariest thing. Oh yeah, for sure. And in TV shows and stuff, they always just like murder people mm -hmm. by the dozen. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Uh, it's called Hail Satan, but with a question mark, um, and it's on Hulu. Cool. Yeah, recommend. But yeah, um, there's not a ton to go into. Um, That's fine. We don't have with to. these because it, there, there's there's several different types. So um, you can imagine it. Fold in whatever tenets you need mm -hmm. to to make it make sense. And there's yeah, and there's there's different you know teachings within that that can be either just kind of cherry picked out or mm -hmm. overall a current that you can say no look like we could make these two things work basically. Yeah, I definitely want to do a future episode on like religion and communism and or socialism, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of fruit in that orchard. For sure. Uh, what do we have left? We have green anarchism. 
I like that one. Eco anarchism, same thing. Cool. Uh, save our dying planet via anarchism. You know. Great. I'd love to. <laughs> uh, I mean, it just you know it places a priority on environmental issues, and cool. I think has a rightful critique about about some of the especially more earlier developed ideology anarchist ideologies that like hey please think about you know not just producing enough for everybody mm-hmm. but doing so sustainably you know like the industrial one maybe they'd have issues with that like hey y'all make sure you're you're not fucking this one up right yeah make sure we're not just focused on developing the productive forces but also mm-hmm. <laughs> also still having a planet oh, that'd be great <laughs> So, yeah. I saw this. uh, Helen, actually, she sent me this great TikTok of someone being like, I'm so excited for the vaccine because then my COVID anxieties will go back to climate change anxieties. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. For real. (sighs) Yeah. Uh, You can also have vegan archism. Like vegans? Vegans, yeah. All right. Uh, So this kind of merges anarchism with animal liberation. Okay. So this one's and not just like animal welfare, but like we should not use animals like at okay. all. And Interesting. More extreme than I practice, at least. Yeah. Um, I do some meatless meals now and then, but I mm, I love cheese. Okay. That's the thing. Yeah. It views the state as unnecessary and harmful to animals, both human and non-human, uh, while practicing a vegan lifestyle. Uh, so they kind of, you know, come. it's... Within maybe the umbrella of green anarchism as well. I would say, yeah. Uh, But yeah, it kind of adds in that animal liberation. Cool. I mean, our food system is like super fucked up, so that's probably a good one to have on hand. Yeah, this is one, however, I think just because of my own personal proclivities. And (laughs) also, I think that there's ways to responsibly use animals. Uh, But I would appreciate the... The council exactly of the of the vegan anarchist. <laughs> I want a I want a little council of people, little angels on my shoulder to tell me, but I want to be able to ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> great, good, good and great. You go like a RPG style. You leave them home on the missions where you're going to make them upset. <laughs> yes, yeah. I go still go talk to them at camp and patch things up and tell them what they want to hear. Give them gifts. <laughs> yes, but I just yeah I. Don't, I Want to want to hear from them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that would make you definitely a, a synthesis. Was that one of them? Synthesizer. <laughs> yeah, the synthesis. Synthesizer. The synthesizer anarchists. Um, anarchism without adjectives, right? Okay, Just yeah, yeah. Plain old vanilla. Just regular anarchism. old. I like synthesizer though because it makes it sound like you got cool beats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a lo-fi anarchist to chill too. Yes. Chill and study uh, too. Uh, someone should make the. The study girl, but anarchist, you know. I'll draw that. (laughs) That'll be our episode art, hopefully. Uh, Anarcho-primitivism is the next one. Okay, I think I've heard of this one. Anarcho-primitivism, their tagline is, civilization was a mistake. (laughs) Sorry, you caught me uh, drinking my (laughs) sparkling water, uh, which kind of tells you everything you need to know about my view on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, so they say civilization... It's really messed everything up. I don't like this one. Yeah. Uh, and they go, no. from, they go from different points. Some of them say, you know, oh, we messed up when we did the Industrial Revolution. Mm. We should have stayed before that, you know, agricultural or whatever. And some of them, a lot of them say, <laughs> actually, you know, I mean, agriculture, man, we, we had a good life before that. Hunter-gatherer, hey, that's really what we should have been. Wow. I see a lot of joke tweets like that, mm-hmm. but. You know, the ones that are like, man, some motherfucker invented agriculture and now I got to go to a Zoom <laughs> meeting or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what they're saying is that they want to deindustrialize. <sighs> they want to abandon, you know, large scale organized technology of any sort or go back to the land and uh, and be nomads, man. You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. you only had to work like three hours a day. And then the rest was chill time. Because you didn't want to use any calories. Yeah, you better chill because <laughs> who knows, a wolf might run up and you need to run. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anarcho primitivism, I wouldn't keep these guys on my Mm-mm. council either. Just because 
man, like you die of preventable diseases. You just, you know. Yeah. And to me, to go back to like the pacifist view, I think that reverts a lot of us to just our physical attributes. Um, you know, yeah. that's going to leave disabled people out. That's going to leave, you know, me. I can't fucking run. So <laughs> it's yeah. going to leave a lot of people out and it will resort to a power structure based on physicality, which is not my deal. Yeah, it is in that way very ableist or mm -hmm. uh, just leaves out marginalized groups in, in a variety of ways. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. I'm not for that one. Not good. I if you personally want to go start a farm and and just be a hermit, fine. But don't make everybody do it. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people, not a lot of people, I don't know. There are some people who could benefit from mm -hmm. applying that in their own life and be, like you said, fine, I'll drop off the grid, I'll do this. Yeah, that's go cool. for it. I think that's great. And I think back to the land is great in a lot of ways, like food production and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like, we don't have to go all the way back, guys. <laughs> I can still have like a couch, you know? Right, yeah. Our next one is anarcho-transhumanism. Let's go the other way. Is this aliens? This is, this is the anarchism of the future. Okay. Uh, so transhumanism, broadly speaking, is the idea that like humans were fine, but like we could be better. <laughs> humans suck. We could augment ourselves with technology. Whoa, cyborg anarchists? Yeah. Uh, you know, so the concept of uh, like the singularity, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you eventually make the machines that are cool enough computers and stuff cool enough that they can build better machines than you could so Hell they can yeah. improve themselves and then eventually that that just like exponentially speeds things up to where boom utopia yeah listeners in our space D, &D campaign i do play a sentient uh, robotic and they yeah. are wonderful <laughs> <laughs> well transhumanism is similar to that you know we augment ourselves to the point where we can you know, improve so vastly on that, that we're a new thing. You know, we've transitioned from Whoa. the old human to a new kind of godlike species. Okay. Or at least hyper advanced, right? Yeah. The anarcho transhumanist kind of blends the two anarchism with that. And the reason that anarchism gets involved is because they look at it and say, if we do that under capitalism, Oh, that's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be gods among men. And then like, peons underneath that they you know just like abuse yeah that's what i was thinking so we don't want that mm -mm. so we need to you know get rid of those power structures and 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 equalize people so that that could actually be good yeah because not everyone's going to want to be a cyborg probably yeah i imagine so especially the anarcho primitivists <laughs> <laughs> defo not interesting Do you, okay would you be a cyborg i know you would yeah <laughs> okay, yeah. I, would. <laughs> I wanted to predict it before you said yes. But. Yep, you're right. I would for like some parts, like I'd get a new wrist mm -hmm. and like train it so that whenever my human wrist goes out, I can still draw because I fear that all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe ears too, so I could mute my husband's snoring. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe eyes too, because I also sleep with an eye mask. I basically go to sleep in a fucking sensory deprivation chamber. So <laughs> that'd be great. Dude, I would not only like cyborg myself up, but mm -hmm. I would have like, I would have that cyborg version of me, but that would be my like going out suit. <laughs> I would normally be just like in the computer. Flesh body? Oh, Hang in out. the computer. Okay. Yeah, I would okay. just I thought... normally be like surfing all the sensory oh arrays God. or just like looking stuff up or whatever. I would be doing that. Okay. And then when I need to go interact with people or I want to, then I hop into my cyborg suit. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. No, no. I think I like my bod <laughs> too much for that. But that's interesting. So with that, we've reached all of the <laughs> types of anarchism. I wow. kind of wanted to recap with, and this doesn't cover all of them, but I found this uh, post on Reddit Fuck of yeah. different types of anarchism, but it is in the spirit of, I think this is a callback to our first episode. Yes, it is. It's in the spirit of a cow chart. Fuck yeah. I love a good cow chart. I want everything in life to be explained via cows. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cow-based education. I don't know if it could work, especially if you're talking to the vegan anarchists. Oh, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Anarcho-communism. The community has two cows. Their milk is distributed to those who need it. <laughs> These are cute cows. <laughs> Uh, next one is anarcho-collectivism. The community has two cows. The people who milk the cows get more milk than everyone else. 
Mm, okay, yeah. That's the one I didn't like very much. Yeah, because he's still got to work. Mm-hmm. Anarcho-syndicalism. The Cow Farmers Union has two cows. The cows have a union now, too. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> we got anarcho-mutualism. You have two cows. You exchange their milk for a baker's bread. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anarcho-egoism. <laughs> you have one cow. You used to have a second one, but Max Sterner took it. That's great. It's got the cartoon and everything. <laughs> Uh, green anarchism. <laughs> Nobody has any cows because cow breeding is environmentally unfriendly. Okay. Uh, anarcho capitalism <laughs> with anarcho in print in a uh, quotation marks. You have two cows. You force your child slaves to work them for you. You sell the milk and earn the profits. Boo. Uh, anarcho primitivism. <laughs> you spend two weeks hunting down a cow. You kill it with a rock and haul it back to your camp. <laughs> when you get back, you find out that Grulak one eye killed and ate one of your kids again. Oh, damn. Filled with grief, you sit down to eat your raw cow. A pack of wolves shows up. They take the cow. You are powerless <laughs> to stop them. You die of a preventable disease. Yeah, that one sucks for sure. <laughs> uh, and then anarcho transhumanism cow, man, pig. All are one within the singularity. What need does an immortal being have for milk? This is very good. Okay. <laughs> I love this. That's Great. a quick TLDR for our episode. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Uh, definitely going to have to post that on social. It's, it's wonderful. Yes. Cool. Well, I didn't do a fun intro because I wanted to save something for the end. Ooh, all right. Let's see it. All right, Let's so hear <laughs> yeah, hear it. <laughs> uh, so I got a message uh, on Twitter from Paula, um, and she sent this really cool study um, about the game Monopoly, and it reminded me that I forgot to talk about something on our Landlords episode. Ooh, okay. So uh, a while back, I think this was early pandemic, we watched um, a documentary about the game Monopoly. Mm -hmm. uh, this documentary is called Under the Boardwalk, The Monopoly mm -hmm. Story. And okay. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. Um, but it told, like, the history of Monopoly and how um, I think most people know now that it was, like, invented by a woman and it got basically stolen by, like, Hasbro Brothers or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it talks about that. But what I thought was, like, my favorite part about it was that the lady did it basically to show how unfair landlords were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone took the wrong message from it and was like, this is great. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so I remember I wanted to mention that in our landlord episode, um, but then Paula sent this really great link. This is a study from uh, the University of California, uh, mm -hmm. a researcher, Paul Piff and his colleagues. They set up a rigged game of Monopoly. Okay. And so people randomly got more money and they saw how differently the players acted. So the people with Ooh. more money, uh, they began to move their pieces more loudly, like, I guess, thunking it down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Displayed, quote, signs of dominance and nonverbal displays of power and celebration. Oh, end quote. wow. Eight more pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. It's just a great detail. Um, and became basically just more rude, uh, yeah. less sensitive to the plight of the poor players, more likely to showcase how well they were doing. And after the game, this is, like, I don't even know how this happens. They said it was because of their skill that they won. Skill and strategy. They knew that they had they been given... They knew that the advantages were real and were randomly assigned, and they still took credit. Like, what kind of cognitive dissonance is going on here? I guess that makes sense, because, like, you know you, you know that it's initially randomly distributed, but you still won, probably. Mm -hmm. And you got to imagine the, like, oh, you know, I could have... If I didn't know what I was doing, I could have lost it all at that point, or I could have... You know, so obviously, you know, I did make the right moves with the <laughs> advantage I was given. <laughs> oh, that one, it just blew my mind. Like, how do you forget? Like, how long is it? I mean, Monopoly takes a while. Maybe you've yeah. genuinely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Oh, yeah, I'd be like, I oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, I, I did the best. I'm grand champion monopoly uh, player <laughs> i would never play monopoly willingly actually it's really boring and kyle always wins so yeah i'm not a fan of the game either it's boring 
but that's hilarious. That. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you, Paula, for sending us that <laughs> link. It really made me laugh um, and also frown. <laughs> Helps explain how why it's so hard to reach. Like you were saying, it's hard to reach kind of the ends of society that are more well-off, more privileged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's hard to, harder to radicalize them because they look <laughs> at their lovely position in society and say, I did this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what are we doing next week? Next week, we're going to have a movie night. Nice. We're going to be watching the 2018 film, Sorry to Bother You. I've heard of this, gotten recommendations to watch it, so cool. Yeah. I don't yeah. really know anything about it. Well, it's a, um, it's classified as a dark comedy, uh, cool. very critical of capitalism and all of its successes, all the exploitation involved there. Where can people watch this movie? Uh, people can watch Sorry to Bother You on Hulu. Great. Thanks for teaching me stuff. That was a fun little overview. Yeah. Hopefully listeners feel a little more comfortable with all the different types of anarchism. Yeah, there's a bunch. You kind of just like kept going. I was like, oh shit, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> right. In the meantime... You can find us online. We are on Twitter at Teach Communism, Instagram at Teach Me Communism. You can send us an email, teachmecommunism at gmail.com. Um, if you want to do that, you can um, send us a request for a future episode topic or ask a question. Um, you can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that is a great way to help people find the show. Even if you're not an Apple user, you can still leave a review. So please rate and review. That like is super nice and yeah, we love it. We do. We also have a YouTube if that's how you prefer your podcasts. And we're on Patreon. Patreon.com slash teach me communism for five dollars a month. You get access to our notes for every episode. Um, Grady, how are your notes this week? Uh, they're, they only, they were pretty short. They only came in at like five pages. I mean, there's a lot of vocab terms though. It could be useful. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> links too. If you want further reading about, if, if you were like, dude, you barely said anything about whatever, just go check it out. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, but yeah, those are really handy. Um, I often refer to them myself when I'm answering, uh, Q and A's from listeners on social. So <laughs> if you want to skip the, the middle person here, you can go straight to the source. There you go. And at the end of the year, those funds will be donated to a local mutual aid fund. So that's cool. And yeah, I think that's that's all the internet I have for you today. Awesome. Well, thanks for being a great student. Thanks for As teaching always. me things. And thank you to all you listeners out there. You can join us next week for another episode of Teach Me Communism, where the class struggle is always in session. Bye, y'all. Bye.